Irish YouTube sensation Jack Septicai. <laughs> Former Ireland manager, he's so much to say, the great Martin O'Neill. <laughs> Live music from Late Late Show first timer, big welcome, Alva Reddy. <laughs> also making his debut tonight, Rory Stories. <laughs> All of this and so much more. Right, well, this man has more fans on YouTube than you two, more than Beyonce and more than Coldplay. He has a staggering 28.8 million followers and has over 15 billion views on his channel. Not bad for a fellow who dropped out of college and didn't know what he wanted to do with his life. Would you welcome, please, awfully native Sean McLaughlin, also known as Jack Septiguy. <laughs> Yeah. You too. Wow, 10 years tomorrow. Yeah. On YouTube. Yeah, since my first video went talk up. To yeah. me, talk to me, how, reflect on the 10 years. How does it feel? Uh, I feel so old. They do you? There's so many people coming into YouTube now and they're all like 18, 17 years old. And I yeah. was like, man, I was like 22 when I started. I got late on the ball, but yes. no, it's been great. I, I mean, I'm just glad I'm still doing it 10 years after the start of it. And, People are still watching and people still like what I do, so and I'm you, happy about that. Of course, and uh, are you still getting the same buzz? Are you still getting that energy off it or do you find it a little harder to keep that going? No, I think it's still there. I think whenever you do this kind of stuff, you kind of find your own passion in it wherever you want to. Yes. And I think trying to remind myself of why I started it and where I started and everything that's kind of happened in my life and where I am now. I mean, it's not often you get to be on the Late Late Show twice, so <laughs> I think that's pretty spectacular. So I'm I'm very happy with it, and I'm very excited about it's still fun, doing like, it. It's nice of you to say that, to, and, and you know you're always welcome here, you know. But when you think of the 28.8 million followers mm -hmm. and the billions of views, and yet coming home is important to you. Yeah, I mean this is the thing that everyone watches. With their parents turn it on every night, every Friday night, and you have to sit there and watch it, and then you start wondering what it's like to be on it. And I'm sure everyone here wondered what it was like to be in the audience. And now you're here and it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't tell me that, it couldn't be, uh, given all you do. It is, there's people who are watching at home who used to go to school with me and now they're all making fun of me, so. <laughs> uh, do you think about that, about your school days? And as you say, the lads and the last lassies back in Offaly watching in tonight. What do you think of them and, and, and that experience? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's weird because I grew up in a town that had like 600 people in it when I was born. So it's like nothing really ever happens there. People just drive through the town and you just yeah. wave at them as they go by. <laughs> that's kind of it. That's, yeah. that's the most exciting thing that ever happens there. And I think looking back on my like, childhood years and everything and where it kind of got me and yeah. things like that and kind of formed who I am as a person. I, I look back on it fondly. I think I had a very good experience in Cause school. Because when you yeah. say they'd be looking at you, laughing at you, you say that in, a, in, a, in jest? Well, that's just Irish people. Yeah. If you ever see someone on the telly, you just laugh at them and be like, that, that's not me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because you, 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 you flirted with uh, real estate, as I say, and music and hotel management, not real estate, excuse me, yeah. hotel management. I was like, and, do you, this is part of my career, you know yeah, more yeah, about yeah. than I just do. Just invented a whole career you could have been. Yeah. But, but you, you did think about uh, hotel management and music, whatever. Uh, so were you kind of adrift, would that be the right word, when, before you got into the YouTube world? Yeah, I think when I did music, uh, like sound engineering and stuff like that, yeah. I think that was what I wanted to do because I was a drummer back then and I thought it would be cool. And then when I was in class and in school and in college, I, I just couldn't keep up with it and it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. And after two years, I passed, I didn't drop out, I didn't fail, okay? I passed my exams, I just decided to leave on my own volition. Yes. And then I, after that, I kind of got a bit lost and lived in a log cabin in the middle of the woods for a while, um, literally with my parents. Yes. And I kind of, I didn't really know what I wanted to do and I kind of got a bit depressed and kind of saw my whole life sort of like laid out in front of me and I was like, well, this is a disaster, nothing's gonna happen and nothing's gonna work out. And then you see on like Facebook back then and all the people who were in my college course were all passing their exams and graduating and- And achieving. Yeah. And then I was sort of lost for a while. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And then I, I started talking to someone from Korea and I thought, okay, I'll go teach English in Korea. That'll be great. But you needed a BA in something to do that. So I was like, hotel management. Okay. Like that's my passion. That's what I want to do. Yeah. And in hotel management, they just spent a whole lot of time saying like, we're overworked, understaffed, <laughs> underpaid. Come join. <laughs> and I was like, okay, maybe that's not for me yeah, either. Yeah. But I, I finished out the three years of that and got my Bachelor of Arts in that. And then YouTube had sort of taken off at that yes. point. So I just sort of ran with that as far as I could. And when you describe the log cabin and 
wondering where to go and what to do. You said you were well, a little bit depressed. Is, is that is that was that? Yeah, to put it mildly, yeah. So it was, it was more intense than that then? Yeah, it was just a lot of like not knowing what I wanted to do and I had no friends around and nobody lived near us and I sort of lost myself in sort of video games and TV and YouTube and all that kind of stuff and just kind of distracted myself every day. And, and that's really... where it began? Yeah, I kind of, because I felt like growing up I didn't really have anyone who really related to what I was doing and any of the friends I had when I was growing up kind of all went off to different places. And yes lived in different counties, so I didn't really get to see them anymore. So by the time I was like growing up, I was like, well, I'm a failure. Everyone else is doing great things, and I, I don't really know what I want to do with my life. And I was kind of procrastinating and distracting myself every day of not wanting to think about things and kind of suffering in silence. Yeah. Um, and then it was just, I found YouTube then, and there was a lot of people watching other YouTubers who liked the same sort of games that I did and liked the same sort of like movies and things that I did. So I found like a community through other people that way. And I think that's why I started my channel to kind of find like-minded people who I could hang out with. That, you've just summed up what your appeal, I think, is to people, is like-minded souls. I mean, you found, the, 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 the cliche is your tribe, but yeah. it, 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 there's truth in it too. There's always a truth in the cliche in some ways, but you found yeah. a bunch of people who've had, yeah, I get that. I get, I get that sense of loneliness, loss, yeah, exactly. uh, drifting. Um, I'm smart, I'm not a fool. Yeah. You know, I, I deserve better. You yeah. Know, is there a sense of all of those things? Yeah, I definitely felt like I deserve better, of course. Yeah. Um, I think, because I, I only, like, found out, like, this year as well that I have, like, ADHD and everything as well. And it kind of, like, recontextualizes your whole life and makes you realize, like, oh, I'm not stupid. I'm not dumb. I just couldn't really, like, keep up. And the way the curriculum was kind of, like, laid out wasn't really suited for my kind of, like, learning style. And I think going on YouTube and finding other people who kind of felt the same way. And yes kind of felt left out and felt like outcasts or felt like they're a failure and you kind of just talk to them and realize when I got success, then a lot of them look to you and live vicariously through you and kind of relate to that what's quite your, heavily. What's your two-line explainer to ancient people about <laughs> what you do for a living? Um, I shout, By ancient people, I mean me, of course. I shout at video games yeah. daily. <laughs> and you're showing people what your opinion of this game is, essentially, and, and yeah. how to play it. There's, there's more stuff to it than that. Of course it is, more nuanced than that. There's a lot more than just like the games that I do, but that's kind of where I got started. Okay. And what, and what I... So here I am watching you in, in a documentary that you made, yeah. uh, touring in a, big venues mm -hmm. around Europe and the United States yeah. with big crowds of young people who are hanging on every word you say <laughs> about your childhood in Ireland and, mm -hmm. you know, your life story, essentially. It, it feels like a, it, almost evangelical and they are connecting with you because I think they feel the way you felt. Is that what's happening there? It just felt more than just a stand-up routine or a life story. It felt that you were saying, I get you, you get me, we're all here. What? I was trying to get yeah. a handle on it, actually, Sean. What, what, yeah, because the, the tour was called How Did We Get Here? Yeah. And it was like, it was telling my life story kind of in a funny way. But the, the message at the end of it was that I grew up in a town with 600 people and it wasn't really known for anything and no one really knows where it is. And, I, now I'm here on stage, like talking in front of like 2,000 people, yeah. and kind of just showing people that journey and showing like there's no, there was no secret to it, there was no magic to it. I didn't do any one thing that like, I didn't find like a key to the kingdom that, to like figure it all out, and I just laid it out bare to be like, I'm messed up. I have a lot of baggage that's like in my brain to take with me. I just worked hard and found something that I really enjoy doing, and to try and empower people to kind of like find that for themselves in life as well if they feel sort of lost and drifting. And that's who, that, that's the type of person who comes to the show and in, in some respect, not all of them, but some of them are there. So yeah. but there's a kindness to it too when you bring them up on stage, you play with them. Yeah, when you get games. to see, like, like you said, like your tribe and you get yeah. to see them in person and everyone kind of gets to, they, they meet each other online and then they get to actually go out and be like, well, he's here now, we might as well, might as well all meet up now yeah. and like 10 of them will get together and all come to the show and meet up for the first time as well. Did you, did you make real friends online? I'm not trying to be smart, but <laughs> you no, know, do you know what? There is a danger, isn't there? I mean, I know yeah. this from before, once upon a time, where you, you kind of seek validation online. Right. I, I did it for a little while and until I realized how empty that was and I chose to remove myself from it. But yeah. I think there is a danger, isn't there, at, at some point. It's fine when you're an adult, but younger people, be careful. I'm not, I'm not anti-online, by the way. I'm just saying be careful of where, yeah. you, where you tread. You, know? you definitely have to like, learn your own boundaries. And there's no, yeah, there's no rule book for doing any of this type of stuff. And especially if you're thrust into it really quickly with a yeah. large audience. 
and people start watching because you have no control over that. Like the amount of people who are going to watch you is kind of up to them and algorithms and all that kind of stuff. So when they all lumped in on me, uh, you kind of have to navigate your own path and figure that stuff out and set your own boundaries very carefully. You're a movie fan, right? So you, uh, you yeah. probably get the reference when I talk about Citizen Kane, one of the great classic movies of our time. Sure. And I got that sense from your program where you, you talk about being online all the time, all the time, all the mm -hmm. time. And it, I think you're kind of saying that can be a bit of a head fry as well because it's a lot, but that's your job. I got the sense that you were at your happiest, talking like your, your rosebud moment for me, <laughs> was the tree. Yeah, I mean... You went back to the tree and there was no noise, no computers, and you thought... And you were looking at it as if to say, I was nine, I was ten, I love that tree. Yeah, the tree was a lot smaller when I went back to it this time, but yeah. <laughs> it, it kind of brings it all back home, like some of the uh, neighbours that I'd had when I was growing up were still there and you get to see where you grew up and... Mm. It's not everybody that your home gets turned into a vet's office <laughs> at some point, but it was cool to kind of like go back and just see where everything was and kind of recontextualize everything and yeah. kind of, I think, recentering yourself. And I think Irish people are very good at kind of keeping locked into your roots. And uh, a friend of mine today was like, no matter who, who leaves, we all come back here eventually and we all kind of like miss home and end up in the late, late show. Exactly. That, that often can be the way. Yeah, like a big Egypt. <laughs> Congratulations on your success, honestly. Thank you. And I haven't, didn't even met, get to mention Free Guy, which you were in with Ryan Reynolds. I, mean, yeah. I went to see that in the cinema. I said, there's Sean, Jesus, fair play. Yeah, terrifying. So, no, no, good on you. <laughs> no, keep it going. Good on you. And you're always welcome back here. We'll see you. We'll complete the hat trick soon, I hope. Cheers. Okay. Thank you. Jack Septicai, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Sean, good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now.